Buccaneers. Outside of the Buccaneers, you don't really have to see that many threats in this division of the NFC South because now that, you know, they got Baker Mayfield and they're trying to figure out if Baker Mayfield is 100% legit or not. But ultimately, whether he is legit or not, I mean, the Falcons, they have the missing piece that they've needed in Kirk Cousins and Michael Penix Jr. at quarterback. So that means weapons we didn't really see thrive over the past few years. They get to have themselves a year. Drake London gets to thrive. Kyle Pitts gets to thrive. Darnell Mooney gets to actually thrive. And then, oh, wait, did you even forget that the Falcons have some dominant running backs back there? Because those have been the guys who's been really carrying the offense over the past few years. You've been seeing B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier. Those boys have been balling, but now you can mix it up a little bit. So not only do you have to hand the football off and not only can you hand the football off, but you can also throw the football and you have a quarterback who can throw the ball more than 35 yards. Who can throw the ball, the ball more than 35 yards accurately. So easily for this division of the NFC South, I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons to go ahead and win, man. I think right now where they are, all the pieces are finally going to connect. They finally have weapons with a quarterback who can get them the ball in open space and make something happen. So there's some high hopes for the Atlanta Falcons in terms of winning the NFC South. But above all, they are the team to watch in that division. Now, the Lions, they're kind of expected to win the NFC North. A lot of you all voted on the poll on our story that the Lions were going to win the NFC North. And I want to tell you right now. That very much can happen, but the NFC North is going to be a toss-up regardless of how you look at it between the Bears, the Lions, and the Green Bay Packers because I know on paper and statistically the Lions look like they are the best team there. However, you have to consider who the Bears have on that roster and you have to consider who the Packers have on that roster and who the Packers have at quarterback. Because this was a, a guy who debuted in his first season of the NFL, took his team almost to the conference championship game. If it wasn't for Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers, we could have seen another rematch of the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers from the regular season. And oh yeah, before you get too excited about, you know, the Lions winning the NFC North, don't forget the Green Bay Packers did smack up the Lions again on Thanksgiving Day. And the Chicago Bears, I know they lost to the Lions last year, but they didn't really have as many weapons as they have now. And don't forget, because the Chicago Bears were leading the Detroit Lions all game when they played in Detroit last year. So you got to consider certain things. And I know it was a very, very sweet season last year for the Lions and it didn't end the way many people wanted it to. But hey, man, you cannot overlook the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers in this division because those guys are hungry. They haven't had success in a long time either. Um, the Packers really haven't done anything since Aaron Rodgers. They had a couple of appearances to the conference game uh, when Aaron Rodgers was there. But the Bears, oh, they've been bad for a long time. Bears have been bad for a long time. So you got to understand, you know, they're coming hungry. And I think the NFC North is going to truly be a toss up between the Bears, the Lions and the Green Bay Packers. The Vikings just recently lost their quarterback. Uh, J.J. McCarthy suffered an injury and he may come back. But either way, I, I don't think the Vikings are ready to really thrive. Um, I do feel bad for Justin Jefferson, but oh, man, that's tough. Anyway, look, so that that's going to be a toss up. But if I had to put money on any team, I think I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a team I'm going to choose yet. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the NFC North. <laughs> I'm going to wait on that one. We got the NFC West, the 49ers, Rams, Seahawks, Cardinals. And in this conference here or in this division, I will say the 49ers will easily win the NFC West. And I say easily because the biggest challenge they're going to have to face is with the LA Rams. And while you can't sleep on the Rams because they got some guys over there who can make plays and they got a, a great quarterback in Stafford, um, great receiver combination in Cooper Cup and then Puka Kanoa or like, oh my gosh, they got some nice guys over there. So you, you can't sleep on them and ultimately divisional play is always gonna be tough. But I think the 49ers, they have something that the Rams are just not there with. And obviously both teams have weapons but the 49ers have a lot of chemistry on their side in terms of, you know, pulling through and winning these ball games. They kept the same roster for some time now. And I'm expecting Debo Samuel, 
to come out and, and do the type of things that Debo Samuel does. We'll see what Brock Purdy does in his second year uh, of really trying to make some things happen. And now the league is going to adjust to what they seen last year. That will be interesting. Um, just comparing these two teams, it's going to be a battle. So I, I don't want to say 49ers are easily going to win, but if I had to put money on it, I think I would trust the 49ers to go ahead and win this division here. But you can't sleep on the Rams because that's a veteran quarterback in Matthew Stafford. Cooper Cup, veteran receiver as well. And Puka Kanoa, he's a young rising star that's going to go out there in uh, L.A. and really give it his all every single time he's on the field. So uh, that one's going to be a toss up between those two teams. But above all, I'm going with the 49ers to um, win that division there. And then last, this is probably the weakest division in the conference of the NFC, the NFC East. Usually, we don't say they're the weakest division, but out of everybody happening, you know, everybody in the NFC right now, this team is definitely garbage. Um, and this division is definitely kind of washed. So only team here to worry about is the Philadelphia Eagles. Cowboys, they're a joke. They haven't paid C.D. Lamb. They're trying to probably lose all their receiver options right now. And I think above all, if not this season, next season, we'll see the Dallas Cowboys completely rebuild and completely tear everything apart and try and just build within again because it's a joke, bro. They, they've been a joke all offseason. They haven't really made any moves in the offseason. They brought back Ezekiel Elliott, which is like the most exciting move. And Ezekiel Elliott is, is old in NFL age. So, you know, it, it's not looking good for them. But I got the Eagles easily winning this division here just because out of the Commanders and the Giants, I don't trust either one of those teams. The Giants shit show just waiting to happen <laughs> it, it's just not good over there i don't trust the giants at all but again divisional play is always tough so you never know what's going to happen but above all going with the eagles to easily win this division of the nfc east all right now look man hey that's all we got for y'all this episode i appreciate you for kicking it appreciate you for hanging uh we got the afc coming up next week so you got to stay tuned for that. I'll break down the division winners in the AFC. And the AFC definitely has a lot of competition as well. So we'll see the Chiefs, Ravens, and the Browns, and all of those different guys, the Dolphins, Bills, you know, a couple conferences over there. Um, so Or a couple of divisions over there with some nice talent. So we'll really see. 